All right, guys, welcome back to another update. So, uh, yeah. So I'm going to go over a few things that I did. For one, I sped up the turn in place so that it happens faster, as you can see, um, and more continuously. Uh, that way, whenever we're aiming, uh, we can just aim like this, and it'll keep going. Yeah. So also you'll notice that I set it to so that it toggles on and off now and I'll go into that and if you press 4 on the keyboard then he'll go into the fighting stance and if you change back then he'll he'll play a transition animation. I might redo that transition animation. Uh, it kind of looks funny because you're moving from a dynamic animation into a non-dynamic animation and that their idols are kind of stiff as you can see uh, and the only reason why it looks less like it doesn't look completely stiff is because I'm actually layering breathing over the top of it that's how stiff their uh, their idols are they're so they're so stiff I had to additively apply a breathing to it just to make it seem a little less stiff. Uh, uh, but anyway, so there's that. And then you can move into that. And I may redo that transition too later. I just kind of threw that together today. Also, uh, if I move into this, then you, you'll notice that you can no longer uh, shoot before you're aiming. If you try to shoot and you're not aiming, then he'll aim, but he won't shoot. And then you can press it again and he'll shoot. Uh, you may not like that mechanic, but uh, that's just the way I decided to fix it. Um, so I'll go over that in a minute. You can no longer shoot while uh, traversing. And if you try to shoot while you're uh, before and leading into a traverse, then it'll just stop shooting. Uh, whatever montage is playing when you try to traverse now, it will automatically cancel any, cancel and stop any montage that's playing before it plays the traversal animation. Uh, yeah, so that's important to note. That also means that if we're reloading and we try to traverse, it'll stop the reload. So I did find earlier where, and I don't know if this is a bug in their own system, but earlier whenever I tried to traverse, he kind of went, yeah, you seen that, that camera thing? I think that might be a bug in their system, but I'll look into it and try to see if I can figure it out. Um, so anyway, let me just go over the uh, updates and stuff like that, what I changed and how this stuff works. I'm not going to get into how this system right here works. Uh, you know what? I forgot to show you something. So let me just press four. And now that we're in four, I pressed the middle mouse button uh, to go into the this mode so that he doesn't uh, so that he doesn't turn in place whenever I'm looking around. Um, now I'm pressing G on my keyboard. Uh, and this is a, and you'll notice that this this one looks a little bit better uh, than the other one. And you can swap those out if you want, uh, but it, it, it would take a little bit of work. Uh, because you'd have to kind of strip their turn and play system or at least disable it. Uh, so right now, if I just press G on my keyboard, he'll just do it in place, and he won't rotate, obviously. Uh, so this works best at 45 degrees, for, between 45 degrees and 180 degrees. And the reason why it works is because he's jumping and turning. He's not picking up one foot at a time. Uh, that's the reason why this method works. That's a secondary method that I put in there for you guys and I made those animations myself. Uh, so 
anyway, moving on. Um, I did make those animations today, too, by the way. So, if we, let's just start in the character blueprint. So you'll notice under DAO aim offset, you'll notice that I have enable AO debugging under here. You can uncheck that now to disable that. I did change the way that the debugger uh, stuff works now by default. It just stays for a second and then goes away. Uh, the traces do. But you can turn that off by disabling this. Now this is the input action for the unarmed custom state. And I did add another state called custom idle under the overlay states, which as you can remember is under the blueprints, DAO data enums. The input mapping uh, context is still under the input folder. The input action is under the input action folder under the input uh, folder. And the button to press is 4 to enter that. I added a to the blueprint interface on the animation instance. The interface that we're using in here. To that I added a function called get is aim ready. Uh, and this is what I'm using to see if it's ready to aim. I mean, ready to fire. Uh, that's why the boolean is called ready to fire. Uh, I probably could have said uh, get is ready to fire uh, as the function name, but whatever. Uh, you can change it if you want. So that's basically that. You'll notice that I am just having the server call uh, set the custom idle instead of call, uh, calling this now. That's only on this one. I'm not going to go through and refactor the entire system of replication. But basically, from my understanding, it's pointless to have a server call a server RPC. And so I am not having the server call a server RPC. Uh, instead, I'm just having them set the state directly. Uh, also on the event graph, you'll notice that all that crap that was down here, I put it under the DAO logic. Uh, that's where that stuff is at now. So that tidies things up a little bit. If we go into the original logic, which isn't so original anymore since I've uh, replicated it, uh, added the replication to it, um, this is what I changed right here. Stop anim montage. Before it plays the anim montage, an anim montage, I'm telling it to stop. And that's basically all I did with that. That prevents anything from interfering with it. Also organize this a little bit better. Right here I'm saying uh, is aim ready and we're not doing a traversal. Okay, go ahead and fire the weapon. That's basically all I'm doing here. Now we're going to move on to the anim uh, animation graph. You'll notice that I'm doing a an unarmed or custom idle here uh, because right I'll move this over to where it uses it to where they all go through the states and we don't have to have this extra crap here later on. Uh, but for right now, this is this is just how I'm going to do it. So I added an extra pin here. It's doing the same thing. And right here I'm saying nor. If we're not equal to it. If, if uh, we're equal to, if we're not equal to unarmed or custom idle, basically, uh, then we do that. Same here. This will be true if we're not in the custom idle state or the unarmed state. If you try to do a not equal to or not equal to, 
then it'll fire true if either one of them are not equal to if the current state is not equal to one of them and it always will not be equal to one of them even when you're in the unarmed state then it'll fire true which is why I did nor um, right here I adjusted these interpolation values uh, for the alphas of these right here on both of them just made some slight adjustments and inside of here on the ready state on become relevant we're setting we're calling this function which just sets is ready to fire to false and on the aiming state whenever we're fully blended into the aiming state we set it to true if we ever exit this state for whatever reason and it's not related to moving from aiming to ready then we just go ahead and set this back to false So if we go to our characters, UEFN mannequin, motion matching data, and you just open up this post search database, dense, uh, you'll be greeted with this. You can go into this uh, nested chooser called stand idles. And you'll see this is now also a nested chooser called idle. It still gets chosen based off the same parameters. And if we edit it, it'll take us into that. And you'll see that if we are in the, the custom idle state, then we will choose idles custom. If not, we will choose the idles. Uh, so if we're not equal to custom idles, we'll always choose the stand idles. And this is just a fallback. Uh, if we browse to that and open that, you'll see I have a transition from inside of here. And and the other one, let me see if I can find it. And the other one, I just have the custom idle and the transition to that custom idle inside of here. And I made these myself inside of uh, Cascader. You'll notice that I added some buffer frames on the beginning of it. That's for blending. Uh, it was just a safeguard. I'd rather have too many frames at the beginning than not enough. So I just added eight extra frame. Eight. I added like 10, 10 more frame or well, nine more frames actually than uh, because it starts at frame 10 in that pose and then it goes into the other pose. So I'm excluding this from the database, these first seven frames, and I do the same thing on the other one. If you add a notify state, exclude from database, that's what you're seeing here. On this one, uh, this is blocking it from entering the, uh, from the motion matching entering at say frame 11, 12, or 10, 11, 12, 13, all the way through 37. It cannot enter at any of those frames. It has to enter uh, between frame seven and 10. It has to enter somewhere right here. This uh, post search override continuing post cost bias. If you go over here, you'll see this. This is the one I added to the track two. I did not change the default uh, modifier value. It's negative one. It reduces the cost of continuing this by negative one uh, by one point it reduces it by one point and that allows it to continue on and finish the animation before it moves on to a uh, another animation if you go to windows and you make sure this is checked animation data modifier and then you find that window over here you can add the foot L, foot R, and move data speed to this, and then just apply it, and it'll add these curves right here. These curves are used somewhere else. So I'll, I may go into that in another video, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. Uh, but it's probably just a good idea to add those uh, to any animations you bring in here that you're going to pose match against, 
or a motion match against. <clears throat> so that's this method here. And I showed that to you right here. Now there's also another method and that's this one. And this allows you to just uh, stay in that pose. But if you don't, then you'll have to move over into this pose like this. And it may look a little funny, so you may not like it. But I decided to uh, leave both of these here. Transitioning uh, to that idle state was problematic. I may revisit that later. Uh, that's why I don't have a transition. Also, if I added a transition, it would also add a delay. So that kind of makes it undesirable to have a transition uh, to play for a turn in place, to go from the idle to a turn in place. Um, I kind of think this method right here is probably more preferable. I will discuss that now. So if we go back into the blueprint, and we go to our event graph and go to the DAO logic. Down here, you'll see I'm pressing the G key. That's this right here. And what I'm doing is I'm getting the difference between the root rotation uh, from the root transform rotation, which is taken from the offset root bone. Uh, I'm getting the difference between that rotation and the aim rotation, which is the camera rotation. And if the Z, the yaw of that left to right uh, is greater than zero, then it's a left turn animation. Otherwise, it's a right turn animation. I am motion warping here. And if we open these up, you'll see this motion warping here. And I have translation disabled because we don't need translation. We're not moving through space. We're only warping the rotation. So everything is default here. I just unchecked warp translation and I set my target name. And I start the warp when the root bone starts rotating. So you, you can see over here, you can see over here where it starts rotating. And I end it where it stops rotating. So, yeah, that's basically uh, that method right there. Uh, I will go into this st stuff later. I might do a full-blown video um, where I'm, I make the animations, I bring them in, set them up, and uh, all of that. So, anyway... Those are the two methods. Uh, I may add some logic that just replaces their turn in place system with that with something like this. This is just for testing. Uh, this is just a prototype, just a proof of concept to show how it works. Uh, this isn't how you would actually want to do it. You wouldn't want the player to have to press G to rotate, obviously. Uh, so. Anyway, I will I'll consider how I might actually integrate this into the system without having to actually completely strip out their turn and play system so that we can still have their turn and play system. But when we're in this custom idle state, we're using this turn and play system. I will look into that. I'm not going to look into it this weekend, but that's uh, potentially going to be something that's added uh, to it in the future. And I will see you guys in the next video.